Welcome to TYT Sports, Francis Maxwell here. Monday night football. See what I did there, see what I did there, I'm happy with that. Um, so this is a segment on Monday, five talking points to take from the weekend. Um, the Premier League kicked off as we know, um, some controversial games. As always, that's what you're going to get with the Premier League. That's why I love it. That's why I love it, I love it, I love it. Because you're always going to get the controversial results, the controversial calls, um, the the giant killing games. It's just what happens. Okay, so The Guardian had a very good talking article that we're going to reference to for our five talking points from the Premier League. So the first one, City, well set for their defence. I said it in my recap with them. Uh, Manchester City are well set in their defending of the title. Um, they looked comfortable. Um, David Silva is going to be a key player as he has been through the years for them. Uh, and long story short, they look they didn't look threatened at the back, and they looked efficient going forward. It's kind of way to say it. Like, it kind of reminded me a little bit of Germany. They went in, they got the job done, and they left. Um, Aguero is going to be huge for them to score goals like he did in that memorable 2011 season when they won it. Um, of course, last season he didn't play as much because his injury. Um, but he's shown that he's back, ready to get to work, and he scored his first goal, which is a huge point for them. Um, the thing about the next point is going to be similar to what we talked about in our previous video with Manchester United and Man City, but we're just going to touch on it a little bit more. Uh, Van Gaal needs to get to the drawing board, and he needs to get Woodward, um, the Manchester United chairman, in his office, tie him down to, a straight, uh, to the chair, and just be like, you need to make signings. You need to give me the money to make signings. I don't know where the breakdown's coming. I don't think there is a breakdown. I think Van Gaal likes to take his time making decisions. Doesn't want to rush into his signings. Um, I think a lot of the signings that have been made before him uh, like getting here has been predicted by the board. I don't think they're Van Gaal's signings. Like Shaw, I couldn't see him really going in for that. Herrera, yeah, he's a good player by the looks of things. But big names are needed. Vidal, Di Maria, these guys can change games. Um, they need a centre-back. Phil Jones, you've been trying to sculpt, uh, sculpt Phil Jones and Smallin into centre back for for how many times? Like years now, like a couple of years, and I just don't think they're not going to be Ferdinand and Vidic in their prime because you, you, one minute they're getting played at centre mid, and then Smallin's getting played at right back, and they're just not diehard centre backs. You need a diehard centre back. I said that Manchester United should have just got Villar at the start of the season. Yeah, maybe he not might not be the most majestic centre back you've ever seen. But he's strong. He proved in the World Cup that he can keep the likes of Messi in his back pocket. Um, I just it baffles me how they didn't sign him. So that's the other talking point. Van Gaal needs to get players in. Um, I think uh, Vidal would be my number one to get him in. Okay, um, another huge talking point. Looking to the lower parts of the league uh, with QPR, Remy is going to be huge for them to keep their, uh, to keep themselves alive in the summer. I don't think they're going to be relegation battlers. I really don't. I think QPR are going to be a team under Harry Redknapp. Um, and keeping this Frenchman who scored 14 goals and 26 games for Newcastle last season, it was a steal for them. I don't know, like, I just think that he's going to be a, a guy who spearheaded their performance to go in um, to the next season. And he's proven time and time again why he was being chased by uh, bigger names than Q QPR. And I think it's been great for them to get him. With Rio Ferdinand back there as well, another talking point I'm going to add. I think that's a guy who can, I don't think he could compete at the high level. Um, in the Champions League, I think that's why Manchester United um, said he was suffers to requirements. But I think that in a, a low leg, a lower league battle, um, with his um, knowledge of the game, um, his experience at this level, I think he's going to help uh, QPR. As I think Jamie Redknapp, one of the major pundits on Sky Sports, said that Ferdinand will be the key uh, to that to QPR's survival. I think he'll be the key to a successful season for QPR, along with Remy, as I said. Um, and uh, the next talking point, number four, is uh, Keane. Uh, Roy Keane, one of my favourite uh, personalities in the game of all time, can help um, restore fire to Aston Villa. Um, they've struggled a lot. They, they have one of my favourite uh, former players and coaches in Paul Lambert there, who is a hard, he's a hard coach to please. Um, I've known that. But he's a very strict coach, and I think that bringing, his personality doesn't always shine through. And I don't think that's key to a team, but it does add that, uh, that sort of admiration to someone like Jose Mourinho's personality makes people want uh, to see how Chelsea do I just think Paul Lambert needs something to restore Aston Villa to the times when they were exciting to watch and I think Roy Keane um, has no problem stepping into that role not obviously as a full manager the assistant manager he can help them restore to that that hard grafting but exciting uh, aggressive mentality mentality that they thoroughly need after such a horrendous season last year and narrowly es escaping uh, a, a problematic cause which would have been for Aston Villa one of the, the major teams to stay in the Premier League to, to be demoted would have been um, crazy. So, last talking point as we go into this season. 
you didn't want to see another soft like penalty given. We we were plagued by this in the World Cup. Um, it was constantly happening with referees just giving, just buying into stupid decisions. I didn't want it to come in to the Premier League, um, but Gus Poyet Sunderland um, was was paid uh, was penalised for a soft penalty. Um, he he could not contain his frustration um, as Neil Swarbrick uh, was the referee who made the decision to award West Brom uh, the penalty despite minimal contact. And I just hoped it didn't come into the Premier League after, as I said, been looking watching the World Cup and just scratching our heads like why are referees continuing to buy into these decisions, but why are players? Giving them these decisions and diving in, uh, it's a huge talking point and it's something that's going to co uh, come up throughout the Premier League. So those are our five talking points uh, from the Premier League. Obviously, mention in the comment section below what you want to talk about. Uh, we love to value your comments. Uh, some of the viewers, I can't remember to name names, but you are part of the reason why I started to look into this more. I remember one person brought up the great point about um, Manchester United signings and uh, why they're not going to be sort of like enough to try and guide them through it unless they add more. It's like, Kind of broad, but just to remind me, is always good. Um, check out our website, TIT Sports Online. Follow us on Twitter. Tweet me your comments. Tweet TIT Sports your comments. Tweet us just any comments you have in the Premier League. I love to answer and I love to get into a good debate. So uh, try and ruffle some feathers. Thank you.